Hey, welcome back to the All Stars Cars channel. I'm Glenn, and on today's fun project, I've got a truck here, an F-150 with a no start, or I should say it's an intermittent no start. It's no crank, no start. Obviously, if it's not cranking, it's not going to start. And I want to discuss with you what the problem is, how we're going to fix it, and how a new part like this, new being N-E-W, never ever worked, is a true fact in life. So let's get down there and I'll show you what's going on. Fords have a, uh, a lot of these older Fords have a fender mounted starter solenoid is what they call it. Now this truck happens to have a solenoid also at the starter and why Ford puts two different solenoids on their starting systems, I, didn't, I don't know. Uh, some of the older Ford trucks will just have the starter and then your remote starter solenoid, I guess I should show you guys that up close if you don't know what's going on. So here you go. Basically, you've got your negative, positive goes out towards the uh, battery fuses and then down to the starter. And this is your what's called the control uh, signal comes in through here. So when you turn your ignition switch, you're sending positive power here. This is grounded through the fender. It's bolted to the, in this case, the firewall. Could be on the uh, passenger side fender is a common location also. Anyhow, this being a uh, aftermarket a BWD brand it has this fourth post so this is the S terminal that's what you're interested in this one I guess is an additional ground anyway that's how that works but let me show you what's going on and I've already diagnosed this because uh, well let's just say I had a problem I didn't think I had time to film but now it's come to an issue where I think it's important especially for guys working on their stuff at home that this can throw you for a loop so um, let's open this battery case here cover off this just pops off let me show you if you're new to this it might be a little tricky there's a little tab right here right here on the bottom so you need to push that up it locks in there's a frame a metal frame right down here now that's hot you know you don't want to put any metal wrenches on that now you want to disconnect the negative battery which we're going to do I'm going to show you how to swap that part out but anyway um, right in here let me take you in closer how you going to see from back there right all right, there we go. So your battery's right here, and this side is the negative. Now here's that signal wire. So this comes from your ignition. So basically you've got a uh, relay over there on the other side of the truck. We'll send the signal. When you turn your key, your ignition key, you know, send power over here, 12 volts to this contact and it's just a relay that's all this is it's a solenoid this is a relay so this will send power from this side to this side over through here to these fuses through these fuses to the rest of the engine down to the starter all that good stuff anyway what we need to do is take this off and what happened here is this is the original this is a 97 model so this this is pretty old this solenoid if you need to know how to replace the starter I have a video on that with um, where I do voltage drop tests. That's the correct way to do it, to, to verify that it is the starter. And in that case, the starter was gone. So what I suggest is maybe you replace this solenoid with a good product, with a quality one, not a crappy one, um, when you do your starter. It's not much. I think these are about 25 bucks aftermarket and about 30, 35 bucks for a, a OEM Motorcraft. Anyhow, uh, enough rambling about that. What I wanted to say was this truck, you know, I'd go to start it and turn the key and sometimes I'd just hear clicking, you know, nothing happening, no cranking, and then other times it would kick in. And if I put a jump pack on it, I'd actually send a little bit of extra amperage through here and it seemed like it would work then. But I'm going to show you how to bypass all that. So let me uh, grab some tools and I'll grab a helper for inside there to turn the key. It'll make it easier. Test light is needed and a little voltmeter will be all set to go here let's get let's get going so before we get started with the repair I like to check the voltage just you know make sure everything's good and in this case I know it is I'm just showing you guys you got a little voltmeter this one has 12 and a half volts right now this battery so what you can do is go from this terminal on the left side that would be ground over here to positive you should have voltage and I do 12 and a half and then swap go to the right side terminal and go to your negative here I'll switch the lead so we don't get that negative there we go it doesn't matter which way I'm just showing so we don't get a negative here um, go from your negative to your positive side 
and we have voltage there. So we know there's voltage to that solenoid. Now to check this without going any far further, let me uh, let me get the phone. All right, so where were we? So to check the voltage, if you even if you didn't have a voltmeter and you figured that this was you were suspect of this starter solenoid, what you can do is go inside the truck or the car, turn the key, the ignition to on. Now make sure you're in park. And if you've got a, a manual transmission, make sure you're in neutral, obviously, with the parking brake set. And um, we're going to jump this. So let me do that right now. All right, so the key is in. And uh, just going to turn the ignition on, like I said. So all your gauges should come alive. Your radio should work. You know, all that good stuff. That's where you want to be at. Sorry for the shaky camera. So with the ignition turned on, now all we're going to do is jump this, so uh, make sure you have an insulated screwdriver and just touch the negative terminal and jump it here to the positive. Hopefully you get to see that on film. Let me, let me zoom in. I want you guys to see this. Where are we? Where's our solenoid? Right in there somewhere? Right here, right? Okay, so just touch those terminals, jump them. And as soon as this thing cranks and starts, you know, obviously take your screwdriver off and then you can just use your key to turn the engine off. So let's do that. I hit it a little too long so you heard the chirp, but there you go. That's how that works. Let me shut this off. You can hear me. Okay, so my symptoms were, like I said, this was happening now and then, and if I just jumped it, it started. I know the starter's good. I want to show you guys, or demonstrate now, how to tell if you're getting power to this solenoid, because you could have an issue. Let's say your battery's fully charged. You could have a bad ignition switch inside the truck where you turn the key. Um, that can go bad. You could have a bad ignition relay, which is over here. Let me show you in case you need to know right right here in this fuse box and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a helper and uh, let me get Ryan to crank the truck a couple of times here with this with this control wire disconnected and we're gonna jump it so we will take a just a regular test light you know incandescent in this case and we want to look for a nice bright glowing bulb so we know we don't have resistance which I'm pretty sure we don't. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this test light and just gently, you know, put it inside here to this this connector. And we're going to watch when he cranks, this light should light up every time he turns to the, to the start position, not the run. Now where I just showed you where you just put your ignition on, that's called the run position to the actual start. So every time he clicks start, we should hear, well, I don't know if you'll hear it, but you should hear on your vehicle the relay clicking and you should see this light glowing. So if you don't, you need to backtrace, make sure that those components are working, that you're getting power to this area here. So let me grab him real quick. We'll put him to work. All right, so we got a ride guy inside the cab. He's gonna be our starter guy. And um, when I tell him to turn that to the start, the key to the start position, we should hear the relay over there click. I don't know if you guys will, but on your car you should and at the same time we should see this test light light up I'm inside the connector here and let's go ahead Ryan go ahead start start let off do that a few times start yep. start you sure you're holding it for all the way forward right yes. okay go ahead do it one more time start good so it's uh, we know we have good control here we know the ignition switch is good inside, and we know that relay is good. So let's go ahead and swap this out, and I'll tell you more about it. What I want to do is take it over to the bench, and we're going to test it, and I'm going to prove to you how uh, the new one I showed you earlier is completely defective. This one has an intermittent. I'm not sure if we'll catch it, but hopefully our new part works well. So let's get this out now. So we know everything's functioning the way it should except for the the solenoid, which this one here is intermittent, but let's start by removing the negative terminal. That way we won't have any juice flowing through that sucker. Get that nice and out of the way. Already got the control side 
out of there. So just go ahead and take those off. That way we can remove the, remove the connector. Of course, you don't need a fancy uh, battery ratchet to do that. You can you can uh, just do it with a hand ratchet or a wrench if you don't have that. Now, what I like to do is pull these off. Now, just remember where they're going. You've got these two two wires here that go to these fuses. These battery fuses are a little tight, so I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just pulling those terminals off there. Just let them kind of float out of the way. And now this one down here. It's like a double, double dinger, donger. Get that off to the side. Then what you have back here is two eight millimeter bolts. In this case, it bolts to the firewall. Some will bolt over here. You can't see me to the fender. Um, this has fiberglass fenders. So that's probably why they didn't do that. So let me get a eight millimeter socket and we'll zip that out. Now keep in mind that these bolts can be kind of tight because they get rusty. And whatever you do, don't hit your negative terminal here when you're coming over. You just want to be careful. Just be mindful of what you're doing. These can be a little bit corroded, so you might want to do them by hand um, and get them out. They can be rusty. When you put them back, put a little anti-sneeze on there and uh, some lubricant, and it'll go in much better. The trick is not to drop it now. <laughs> So, and then there's another one up here. There's just two. Get in there. This one's right under the harness, so it's a little tight. All right, that guy's out. And now we'll just grab it and get it out of, get it out of here. So, here's these little bolts. Let me show you this. So, hopefully it'll focus. So you got these little ones, little bolts, and there's one here and one here, and that bolts into there, which is a ground, this is actually a ground back here. So anyway, here's the original. Let's go over to the bench and uh, let's play with this thing for a minute. So I have my 12 volt source. I actually just have a spare battery over there with some jumper cables. And what I did was take the negative terminal or, or clamp, go to the back plate here, which I showed you was ground back here, okay? And then all we need to do is touch the signal wire. And when we do, we should hear this solenoid click. Now this one's been intermittent, so maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, let's see. Okay, can you hear that? This one's working at the moment. But it's it's been weak, so to speak. It's starting to go bad. All right, so that's that one. Let's put this brand spanking new. Here's the one I don't suggest, BWD. Let's see where this sucker's made. Uh, Hecho in Mexico, this one here. And there's the part number you want to stay away from, okay? So let's, here, in my case anyway, so right out of the box. So let's do the same test, and we want to go to this silver terminal. This is the S terminal, and let's listen. Okay, we're, we can weld because there's tons of resistance there. There's no click, listen. That, that little tap is just me touching it. But see all those sparks? Sparking like a champ. I have a weak 12 volt battery, so that's kind of good in this case. Nothing. All right, what's up? Yes, I am. What's up? Oh, I always want a hot dog. No mustard. Thank you. That's good. One or two. Uh, one's good, thanks. I don't want to be a fatty. All right, so here's the solenoid here, the new one. Oh, and by the way, let's see where this one's made. This is our Motorcraft, brand spanking new. I think it's 32 bucks, 30 bucks. Here's our part number, and guess what? Made in Mexico, HO in Mexico. But here's our part number. Hopefully, we'll have better luck. So if you need one, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Anyway, same test. We'll put this on here and let's touch this terminal, let's listen. And we, we don't wanna see a lot of sparks. This is much stronger sounding, this magnetic. That is much more powerful, I should say, 
than the uh, the old motorcraft, which is getting weaker. You guys can't, you can hear it, but I can feel it. Anyway, at least we know that the, the new one will work. Um, this BWD is completely trash. It, it, I mean, it's going back. I'll get my, you know, whatever 20 bucks I paid for it, but it's just a shame. And unfortunately, they'll probably just put it right back on the shelf. This came from one of those big box auto parts places because I was in a hurry and I wanted to get the truck back on the road, right? So they had it in stock done instead of waiting like uh, two days for this to show up at my door. Anyway, uh, lesson, it's not really a lesson learned. I already know it. I'm trying to let you know it if you don't to be mindful of never ever worked. But anyhow, what was I gonna say about that? Oh, I saw some writing on here. I wanted to see what that said. It was actually on the, oh, not that piece of crap. This one here it was on the new Motorcraft. They have the part number listed. That one doesn't have any part numbers on it. And it actually says here, replace with Ford service part only. Okay. Other parts may damage. Let me put on my glasses. I'm reading like a third grader. Jeez. All right, let's, 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 I'm putting on old man cheating glasses. Here they are, proof. I can read, I can read, trust me. All right, here we go. Replace with Ford service part only. Other parts may damage the engine electronic control unit. All right, so that's what that says. I should just let you guys read it. Probably read better than me. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. So let's throw that back in and uh, we'll, we'll fire it up and hopefully everything should work just dandy. One more thing I just wanted to mention before we go back to the truck is the way this is molded. So the backing plates, they, they, they're pretty much the same, you know, they, they look good that way. But as far as these terminals here, where you slip your connectors over, if you look here, it has this plastic thing right there. That doohickey where this one doesn't, the OEM. And uh, this thing was really in the way of getting those terminals on. I was able to do it, the connectors. So um, I didn't show you that. I told you about it earlier in the video. I had this junk on. I, I was so angry. I just took it off and put the old one back on and jumped it because I couldn't trust this thing at all. Who knows what it'll do besides, you know, nothing. Anyway, um, keep in mind that the OEM doesn't have that. So your wires and connectors are going to fit much better. And uh, that's, it's just worth it. Back at the truck, let's get this in. So just sneak these two bolts in. Now they give you a little bit, those, the bracket has some slots in it. So um, it's a little bit, or I should say somewhat, somewhat adjustable as far as the angle you put it in. But just make sure your control uh, terminal, that S terminal it's called, is at the top. So that way you can put it back the way it came out. And I like to just get these started. I know my hand's in your way, but not much we can do. We've got to get it done. Sometimes that top one is tricky. I'll just put my bolt inside the socket like this. And then uh, hopefully line everything up and get it started. Don't cross thread, of course. Take your time. So yeah, it's really a shame when you buy, you know, new stuff nowadays. I mean, I'm not surprised. It's not the first time it's happened to me. The only good thing about it, if there is anything good thing, good thing about it, is I can share this information with you guys. But it's easy to get to. This has easy access. So you imagine you're changing out a part. You know, and it's defective and it, it's a lot of labor to get it in and get it out. And that's no fun. So let me grab my ratchet. Just put these in a couple foot pounds, nothing crazy. Just snug enough to get a good ground. I don't know what the exact torque spec is, but. And then another thing that reminds me, when you put these terminals back on, which we're going to do, or these, these wires, let me start with, now your battery's still disconnected, right? You put this big one on, on the back. See, that slides on so nice. And then these two red guys, these fused, go to the fuse link. They go on the right. And then they give you in the uh, box here two new nuts. So I'm going to use those because the old ones look a little bit corroded. Let me grab them. Here we go. Got these nuts right there, a pair of nuts. And look at that. The nuts are made in Taiwan. So we know it's good. All right, let's uh, 
let's get these on here they look just like the in fact the the 30 year old uh, 25 year old OEMs they actually do look exactly like same coloring and it's got this unique I can't describe it but it's like a well I can't describe it I don't know what it's called it's it's like a built-in washer here that spins it's cupped it's cupped in so that goes that way I guess gives it a good tight connection put these shiny suckers on Oh, and I was going to say, when you torque these down, don't torque them crazy. Just get these snug, because you can actually rip that stud right out of the plastic housing. I think it's like a phenolic type of material. Housing it withstands a lot of heat. Um, and just snug that up. Don't get crazy on it. That's my point. good and snug. We don't want anything vibrating loose. There goes our socket. All right, we'll get that later. Next thing to do is, um, next thing we do is hook up our control wire. Just, that just slips right on those, on that bolt. It just kind of pressure fit. And we hook up our negative cable now and we should be good to go. I'll go inside and we don't need a helper for this one. We can just uh, turn the key and we'll see. We'll see what we got. We'll do it actually a couple times just to make sure. Success. So, with everything good and snug on here, um, you know, just double, double check. I like to double check, just make sure everything's not, nothing's loose, nothing's in the way. Take your cover. There's two little, I showed you that bottom clip right here that goes into the bracket. This guy, where is he? Right here. This little, you see that? It's like a little doohickey there. And then there's two sort of pins on top that drop in right up here right here and here in this metal housing so, put that in place and it's important that um i see a lot of these when i work on them that they don't get this bottom clip in and this thing will flop right off so just push that up in there and when you when you pull on it or tug on it it shouldn't move Normally, if they're not in at the bottom, this thing will like be real sloppy, floppy. Alrighty. Hopefully, this video helped you out if you're having a no crank situation with your Ford. Uh, don't forget these starter solenoids here. Like this one was intermittent, and I couldn't catch it on film. But if you go ahead and take your test light, go to the control wire, and it's glowing nice and bright when the key's turned. Try that uh, screwdriver jump trick. You know, just tap her across there, and if it cranks. Well, you got a good indication of what's going on. Um, you do want to do voltage drop tests. I didn't do any of that in this video. This is like, you know, you're on the side of the road, you just need to, need to go. Uh, this might help you out. Now, what I do suggest is uh, check out the video of the starter replacement I did. I'll leave a link in the description down below. It was on this truck here, and I do those voltage drop tests and prove that the starter's bad. So you can do something similar with this here too. Anyway, we did it on the bench. I showed you the BWD garbage and uh, how the new one was clicketing, clacketing real good. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, don't forget Diagnostic Glenn helps you do it again, right? Or I stole that. It's really Diagnostic Dan here. So anyway, uh, smash the subscribe button if you get a chance. Comment is always good. Uh, helps my videos grow or go, whatever. And uh, likes are always good too. I appreciate that. So I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.
bonus footage here. You know, when I dropped that socket at the uh, end of the job, fell into the abyss. Well, here's where I found it. Let me show you where this sucker was. I spent about 20 minutes looking for it. Oh, uh, if it wasn't USA made, I wouldn't worry about it, but can you see it? Look where it fell. Right back in there on this chassis. Let me grab it. Oh man, I need a magnet. Maybe, maybe not. Oh God, here it is. Ah, success.